Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over the severe storms in the Northeast. Currently we have some of them starting up in parts of Pennsylvania, New York, and Vermont, and maybe even extending into New Hampshire and Maine. And those are quickly going to be driving further to the south and east. We're going to be covering that, timing them out for you guys, and giving you all the information you need to know. So make sure you are staying tuned all the way until the end. Here's a look at the current National Weather Service page. As you can see, we have some red flag warnings in effect for parts of Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and the Dakotas. We have some freeze warnings or actually freeze watches up for parts of Idaho and Washington, as well as one county under a frost advisory in Montana. We have some flood watches up in two areas, one for the central Gulf Coast and then another one for parts of Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia and then we have the severe thunderstorm watches up into parts of the northeast and we're going to cover those more in depth in just one moment. Yesterday we had a high temperature tied between two areas in California, Death Valley, California and Ocotillo Wells, California both got up to 112 degrees Fahrenheit. The low temperature was in McKay, Idaho where they got down to 16 degrees Fahrenheit and the highest rainfall report was in Freeport, Texas where they got 8.22 inches of rainfall no snowfall reports uh, yesterday. Here's a look at the current radar, and this is as of about 4 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, which is when this is valid for. So uh, if you're watching this after that time, if you're watching this, especially if you're maybe an hour or so after when, uh, after 4 o'clock. So if, we're look, if you're watching this at, let's say, 5 o'clock Eastern, uh, then you would probably want to go check out uh, the radar, uh, the updated radar, or you want to check out the updated Storm Prediction Center page, because uh, this is definitely going to change between now and then. There there's going to be a lot of shifting between where these storms are now and where they will be in, uh, let's say, even just half an hour to an hour. Right now, we have some isolated uh, storms, uh, not so much a line of storms, but kind of a few scattered ones. So we have one crossing through Albany, another one into the Catskills. We have a few more north of Binghamton, one east of Williamsport, and then we have two up into New Hampshire and Maine, and then another one in northern New Hampshire. So we have a few different lines of severe convective storms associated with mainly just uh, moderate rainfall on the back end of these storms. So what we're going to see is that you have that initial wave of strong convective storms that's going to push away to the southeast. And then behind that, you'll see all of the lighter and moderate rainfall, not so much in the form of thunderstorm activity, which is also going to follow that. Uh, probably it'll follow it by about 10 or 15 minutes. So you get the big storm and then you're going to go into a bit of a uh, lighter rainfall, not as much convective activity. Let's start talking about the current severe thunderstorm watches. We have three in effect as of right now. For the entire state of New Hampshire, as well as much of Maine, except for the eastern part, uh, we have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect. This one currently has a low chance of tornadoes, very low chance of EF2 plus tornadoes, severe wind, that's a moderate risk, 75 miles per hour plus wind, low risk, Severe hail, about a moderate risk, and 2 inch plus hail, possible, but still at a low risk. If we look at the next severe thunderstorm watch, uh, this one goes through eastern Pennsylvania all the way up through central New York into the entire state of Vermont as well as the westernmost county of Massachusetts where we have uh, the severe thunderstorm watch currently in effect. Uh, and and this one is until 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So let me actually check the, the last one that we looked at. Both of these are uh, actually valid until 8 p.m. Eastern Time today. We have a low risk of tornadoes for this one, very low risk uh, of EF2 plus tornadoes, severe, uh, moderate risk of severe wind, 75 miles per hour plus wind, that's at a uh, low risk, and then uh, severe hail, looking at a moderate risk, 2 inch plus hail, low risk of that. If we look at the next one, this is the mesoscale discussion uh, for parts of the coastal northeast. Uh, that goes from Massachusetts all the way to northwestern New Jersey where we have a mesoscale discussion in effect. They're saying strong to severe thunderstorms will slowly develop eastward late this afternoon slash evening. A severe thunderstorm watch may be needed. At that time, uh, they had a 60% chance of a watch and indeed they did put up a watch uh, for a thin little band here uh, which goes from east central uh, 
uh, uh, Pennsylvania through the two northwestern counties of New Jersey into the Hudson Valley, northern Connecticut, and into sun- central Massachusetts. That one has a low risk of tornadoes, very low risk of EF2 plus tornadoes, moderate risk of severe wind, low risk of 75 miles per hour plus wind, uh, and a low risk of severe hit of severe hail and two inch plus hail. That's also at a very low risk as of right now. So. The severe thunderstorm watches cover a good portion of the northeast as of right now. Uh, These could be extended down all the way to the coast, but it looks like it'll probably stay inland, uh, at least as of right now. I would not rule out a severe thunderstorm watch along the coast, but it looks like anything convective should stay uh, maybe just 25 to 50 miles away from the shoreline. If you look at the day one outlook, so this is for today, we have a slight risk of severe weather uh, in that top left-hand corner which covers uh, much of Pennsylvania through uh, New York and then into parts of New England uh, where we have that slight risk of severe weather. Uh, If we look at the tornado threat, it's primarily into central New England, so southern Vermont, uh, northern Massachusetts, east central New York, uh, also into central and uh, southern New Hampshire, western Maine, And that's the area generally where we're dealing with the tornado risk. Uh, If we look at the hail risk, that's also going to be up through central New England as well as uh, for parts of New York and Pennsylvania. And then we have the wind outlook, and that's going to cover broadly much of the uh, northeast. There's no particular area which is really going to be more susceptible to wind damage than another. So generally, we're dealing with wind damage, potentially not a ton of it, but definitely a possibility. And then if you live in central New England, uh, you may want to watch out for one or two tornadoes here and there. If we look at the uh, HRRR model, which is the high resolution rapid refresh model, uh, we're going to time this out hour by hour. So starting out at around 5 p.m. Eastern time today, you can see that we have that line of storms, which is in northern New England. And then we have another couple ones that are down through New York and Pennsylvania. So these are going to be all marching on further to the southeast. And then, of course, behind it, you're going to be dealing with some of that rainfall, more of the moderate light uh, rainfall, not really anything convective or uh, powerful with that if we look at 6 p.m eastern time today what we see is that this line right here which could potentially have a couple uh, tornadoes associated with it not out of the realm of possibilities yesterday the tornado risk was definitely lower because we were expecting more of a straight line of storms to go from maine and in some models it went all the way down to west virginia but the majority of them had it down into pennsylvania at least And if you have one big line, that's not really going to be too much of a tornado threat, more of a straight line wind damage threat, uh, also a hail risk threat. Uh, But when you get these kind of broken up cells, which we're now starting to see where even within the line, you have your own individual little cells, which we were not expecting as of yesterday. This is where you could get some tornadic activity, but more so uh, some hail activity. So hail, tornadoes, both possible today. Uh, tornadoes, of course, they're going to be uh, in isolated areas. They're not going to be, um, more, they're, it's not going to be widespread in this type of event. But of course, one or two or even three uh, tornadoes is possible. You just want to pay attention. If you get a tornado warning, by the way, tornado warning means that they have either seen one on radar. It's uh, it's very likely that there's a tornado on the ground as of that point, or they have a trained storm spotter in that area. And the National Weather Service can confirm that there's a tornado on the ground or that there's a funnel cloud possible of producing a tornado within your area. So once you get that tornado warning, uh, you want to get to an interior room of your house so if you live if you don't have a basement uh, then you want to try and get to maybe the bathroom because it probably doesn't have any windows or if it does have windows it's probably small windows uh, or any interior room so that could be a closet try and go in there and just stay there until the warning expires uh, if you have a basement great just go down there and try and stay also in the middle of the basement not towards the walls because of course if anything happens there so you want to stay in the middle of your house and preferably as low down of a floor as you possibly can so basement would be ideal but even if it's just the first floor of your house try and stay on there uh, because of course and also try and stay away from windows that's how you can uh, keep uh, safe uh, from these tornadoes 
if we st if we move on to 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, you can now see that that line into northern New England starting to die out and move into down east Maine, and then we're dealing with uh, parts of New York, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania, mainly dealing with some of the residual thunderstorms, and those are going to, again, continue to move on further to the southeast, but they will weaken as they do so. So you can see we're not dealing with as much vigor with these storms as we were expecting before. They're not as strong at all as we what we were expecting uh, or as what we were dealing with before into uh, northern Pennsylvania, central New York, central and northern Vermont. So definitely not as strong as what we were dealing with before. And then that just continues to march on further to the east uh, and gradually it weakens with time. If you look at the total rainfall map, uh, and this is over the next, I would say, uh, closer to 20 hours, but the bulk of this will be happening in the next 10 hours. We're looking at uh, around uh, less than a tenth of an inch in that gray color, a tenth of an inch to half an inch in that green color, a uh, half an inch to an inch in the blue, and then one to two or more inches of rainfall in the yellow color. So for the majority of you guys, uh, you're going to be dealing with maybe a quarter to three quarters of an inch of rainfall, uh, but there are definitely some areas that, uh, especially in New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, some spots getting up near an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall. Of course, isolated areas or localized areas could be dealing with uh, maybe two inches, two and a half inches of rainfall, especially if a line of storms kind of just uh, kind of trains over your area and kind of just doesn't move at all. If you look at the Cape values, this is convective available potential energy, and I said this in yesterday's video, but I'll repeat it for those of you who weren't, who didn't watch yesterday's video. In the Northeast, unlike areas uh, like the Northern Plains or the Southern Plains, even the Southeast, where you don't have too much of a temp temperature differential, uh, where the majority of that area is going to have a fairly similar temperature, you're going to be in the 80s or the 90s for a large area. Uh, you're not dealing with any sharp changes changes in the temperature, we do have those sharp differences in temperature in the northeast and it's exaggerated uh, because of the effects of having high elevation right next to, or not necessarily high elevation, but having elevation differences right next to the cooler Atlantic waters. So you're going to have uh, cooler temperatures along the coast. In the wintertime, it's warmer temperatures along the coast, but for the summer, it's going to be cooler along the coast. Then you have that little area of warmer temperatures just inland, and then you have the cooler temperatures uh, into the higher elevations of uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, um, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. Pretty much every single northeastern state has those uh, higher elevation regions, uh, and within that, that is going to cause some changes in the temperature. So you're going to see that on the high temperature map, and that that temperature differential where you're going from maybe 85 degrees to a few of uh, maybe a few dozen miles further to the northwest you're now into the 70s and that's going to cause some energy to be created and that will cause some instability and that's something that you're not going to see in many other uh, areas of the country it does happen from time to time with uh, especially strong storms uh, but usually you want to see cape values up near you know 3,000 4,000 to get a strong storm uh, and you don't necessarily need that in the northeast you can really just have the cape values of a thousand or two thousand and you'll get a decent thunderstorm again because of the temperature profile of that area of the country if you look at the uh, high temperatures you can see what i'm talking about we have along the coast along the immediate coast we're into the 70s then you get that narrow strip of 80 degree temperatures right in here and then you go uh, west of there and you're down into the 60s or into the 70s depending on where exactly you are and what your elevation is so this stark contrast in temperatures is something that again you're not going to see too often in other parts of the country you do see it with strong storms which can create that temperature differential but it's a natural temperature difference in the northeast which is different again from many areas like the, for example the southeast the southern plains there's no real land feature except for the Appalachians that will really uh, bring up that temperature differential so that's something that can help bring up some storms into these areas and if we look at the areas that's getting most of the uh, thunderstorms it's the area that's right in between the really warm temperatures and the really cold temperatures and that's the zone where storms are always going to develop. It's going to be right in between the warmer and the colder temperatures where uh, severe thunderstorms will normally set up. 
And if we look at the dew points, these are also going to be quite high. We're, de we're dealing with dew points right around 65 to about 71 or 72 uh, degrees over this entire area. It's going to be higher along the coast, but even along that area interior of uh, the coast uh, where we're dealing with the bulk of the storms, it will still be fairly high. We're looking at 68, 69, 70, 71 degrees. Uh, so definitely more, uh, high enough to warrant some thunderstorm activity. That is going to wrap up for tomorrow's video, uh, for today's video, for tomorrow's video, I'll probably be talking about the uh, cooler temperatures into the northwest and the northern plains. For those of you who live in states like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, uh, if you live in Nebraska, the Dakotas, Minnesota, I'll be talking about all of that area uh, in tomorrow's video. Uh, pertaining to the cooler temperatures, we're going to be down into the 40s uh, for some of those spots. So the first uh, particularly chilly uh, days of the uh, fall season for those areas. And we're also going to be covering the threat of snowfall into the higher elevations and even some areas that aren't that high in elevation uh, in tomorrow's video. And I'm not sure whether I'll have a snowfall map up uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, I might I might have it up uh, tomorrow depending on if I'm confident in the forecast or not. By the way, tomorrow's video will probably be earlier than normal because I have the day off from school uh, tomorrow, so I'll be able to do a morning upload, uh, so it'll probably be around 10 or 11 a.m. I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, then after that, starting on Friday, again, I'm going back to school, of course, to the regular hours, so uh, you're going to see a similar upload time to today, so between 4 and 6 p.m. on most days, but tomorrow I have the day off uh, from school, so I'll, have the, I'll, I'll be able to do the morning uploads. So that is going to wrap up for today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions, also leave them down below.